All right, good morning again, everyone. This is Mihai from bibcentives.com. Be starting the London session scenarios um, webinar in just a few moments. For those of you new to the session, guys, um, just a quick uh, presentation. We're doing um, analysis on the pound, dollar, and pound yen only. We're starting from the bigger charts, um, build up what I call the big picture for the day. And then uh, we go on uh, smaller charts, uh, see if there are any scenarios uh, we can trade intraday. And um, also I'm trying in the process to look for any possible midterm scenarios, swing trading. Uh, for those of you um, trading larger charts uh, one hour and above. All right. Um, any preference, guys, whether we should start with GU or uh, GJ? Okay, let me pull this uh, window lower. All right. This is an area of the screen I don't usually um, use, so I hope it will not uh, interfere too much. I need uh, the chat window, though, on the screen just to see what you guys are typing. Hope it, this is better for you, Ray. All right. As always, guys, let's go over um, last week's analysis just to point out possible um, outcomes for the um, the setups, the midterm setups. Um, well, I don't think it's relevant now to go over the intraday um, what uh, happened last week. It's been a long uh, while. But those of you trading this GU long for some time, and especially that uh, pound-yen uh, setup I mentioned, um, I think uh, you might want an update for... Um, for that as well. All right. Now, guys, this is what I've been looking at, and uh, let me just um, point out again um, what we're looking at here. I started the, the analysis on the weekly and daily. What you see, um, the levels in pink come from the weekly chart. So we are trading on the weekly into a bullish trend still. Okay? Bullish trend uh, supported by this ascending trend line coming from uh, early 2010 okay and then we have uh, this level of support uh, 160 round number as well and the resistance at 167.30 uh, I think we might want to add a few levels um, today because basically price was very close to uh, this 163 area last week so um, Right now, we're definitely uh, way higher, and there are some uh, relevant levels here on the daily. Let's zoom in. I'm looking primarily for the 61.8 Fib of this drop. Oh, I removed the 61.8 from my Fib. Second. Okay, and... Uh, 38.2 all right so we're past the 60 the 61.8 right now uh, possibly headed towards the 78 this for me is an important level and it also corresponds to a previous high so I'm going to mark this um, 165 91 level also, it's 100 pips above uh, a round number um, ending in uh, 500. So basically, uh, I'm expecting price to go above that round number with uh, 50 to 100 pips, which um, argues for the same um, possible top around 166. So definitely, I will look for possible aggressive shorts starting 166. And I think we should also point out the wave formation, which last week was not so clear, but now it becomes quite clear. Last week, I think we were um, we were looking at the chart uh, right around here, right around here, somewhere at 162. Um, yeah, because I pointed out this long at 61.90. So we were um, in this area. We did not we we were not above this trend line and we were not above uh, the resistance area around 62.50 and 62.90 okay to talk about this 
wave. Now, even if it looks a very aggressive uh, move, look at these um, big um, white candles here making higher highs quite aggressively. It moved uh, to 61.8k of the last uh, move down in just um, three days. Okay, and we're uh, trading now above this level. Even if that is the case, if you look at the bigger picture, this wave down went beyond the 78 acceptable limit for a retracement. So I'm not considering this wave here as a retracement. Let me point this out on a fresh uh, chart. Okay. Uh, other chart. Okay, clean chart. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, the last wave up. We had more than 78 fib retracement. Let me put it the other way. I'm not considering waves here because if um, if I had um, thought about waves, I would have started right here. I will put that fib on in a, in a moment, but with a different purpose. This is what I mean. 78 was broken, and this is basically not a retracement of this wave. It's going beyond, and what I think we have here is something different. A bearish formation going something like this. Not sure how many of you guys were in the room last week. I um, received a few emails um, on Wednesday regarding these setups especially uh, on the GJ. Okay, uh, one moment. I'll remove these fibs. So the target remains here at 78. The target for the upside. And this would be the bigger target for the downside. Somewhere in the 159 area. Okay, once we have a first bounce, we'll look, of course, at smaller charts to, to define that bouncing point or to point out possible bouncing point. Okay, but it's somewhere in between the 61.8, which is now below us, and the 78 at 166. So I would look already to uh, establish short positions around 65.90 with the intention of first seeing about 150, 200 pips and having price consolidate here in this area, somewhere in the middle of the current wave up, something like this, then if we have a bounce here, we might look for another attempt up. But what's nice in, in such cases, okay, you have a move down, okay, that breaks the previous low that you, you can see here, the, the previous swing low, so that's already defining a new formation. It has the shape of a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Okay, I'm not going to draw the waves, it's going to crowd the chart too much, but this is the 1, 3, 4, 5 formation. And you have a big retracement, which it is going almost straight without uh, pullbacks to um, 61.8 and above. So this is why for me 65.90, actually any area uh, above 65.80 up to 66.20. Let me actually mark this uh, because I'm going to come back to this chart next week. The 78% is at 166, and this is for me the area of shorting pound, okay? I'll uh, mark this um, short area. Let me explain why I like shorts here against the trend as it may uh, look. For me, this is basically against the short-term trend, but not uh, necessarily against the trend in general, especially after you have one move defining the new the new wave, which is definitely not complete. We're just in the process of um, having a high for um, wave two, okay, or wave B as uh, as I see it. So let me uh, label this formation A, B, and C somewhere down here. So we're interested in catching this wave C. As you know um, from previous um, 
analysis sessions, I am not actually interested in trading this wave B except for uh, smaller time frames. But I wouldn't trade it on the daily long because it's basically going against what I have right now as a direction, which is the bearish direction set by this wave. So this is w where I take my direction from on this daily. And the entry this last frontier level of 71, uh, 78 Fib. Why I like short tier also it's because your beats. I would have a stop somewhere around 67. Let's just have an average around 67.05. Okay, I would regard this as a level where I would admit I am wrong about it. Stop level for the 78 fib shorts. That means we're risking about 100 pips. Oh, uh, it's right here. Um, I want the text uh, box, but I want to show you guys this chart next week and uh, comment on um, how um, this setup went. That's why I want to label everything. Okay, 6708. Of course, it, we might not reach this 165.74, so that's why you might want to look for short even um, on a lower uh, time frame. We'll have to look at uh, 4 hour and below in just a moment. Okay, we'll look at the rainbow um, uh, template as well. But this is basically what I um, suggest for uh, mid-term right now. Shorting with the intention of adding to these shorts once the move starts to progress, you should be uh, actually selling very close to the top because the 78 Fib for me is the last frontier. Either you are correct, and if you are correct, then you're shorting very close to the top and you have a huge advantage if in case price indeed makes this formation. You can add to the trade at several levels while keeping this bias uh, in the market all the way down to, to a fresh low. Or if you are wrong, you get stopped out for maybe 80, 100 pips. Well, when you're targeting 600, this is definitely a good deal. Okay? Of course, you can time your, your trade better on a 4-hour chart, on a 1-hour chart, and try to, to catch um, maybe a, a spike on those charts or even uh, lower the stop. This is basically a stop that I want to mention now and come back on it next week. Price might be doing some uh, consolidation here around uh, 65, uh, 80, 66, 20, giving you better opportunities. Okay, so these are the scenarios that I want to point out. If the market goes up to about 65, 80, I would short here without looking what I'm shorting. I would simply short the level of 65, 70 and above up to 66, 20, but not higher than 166, 20 though, because anything above that is already starting to work against me and is not an argument in my favor. So up to 6620, it's all right to add to positions. But, well, some of you who don't have, um, who, who don't want to expose too much might have stopped even below 6705, something like 6680, 6690. Like this, you reduce the risk and increase the risk to reward for the trade very much in your favor you can uh, actually have a, a target of six, seven uh, times more your risk. Okay? I think everything is on the chart. In case things are starting to roll down, well, we'll have to see what the four hour is suggesting. Have we already uh, topped here? Let me check. See a formation which is not really a straightforward formation, but it looks like a five waves. Uh, there's a divergence on the rate of change. Actually, there are one, two, three divergences at this time with every high that GU made over the last uh, two, three days. I think starting on Friday, we had divergence. Divergence on the, on the tricks as well. Some divergence on the MACD, which right now seems um, like trying to cross down. But it's not really giving any signal uh, just yet. We have a high in place at 6546. Mm, I'm trying to see if there are any other elements here we can use. 
except for this bearish candle, this hourly bearish candle that just closed 20 minutes ago, there's not much really except these divergences. Look at the divergences on the hourly. One, two, three divergences price keeps going up. The MACD keeps uh, making uh, lower highs. So it's definitely telling you something is happening and there isn't much more uh, momentum left in this move. I know it sounds uh, uh, silly to um, to go against the trend, but basically I don't mind this for as long as I'm not going against the trend for the entire duration of the trend. If I am going against the trend for maybe 50 or 100 pips and aim for 500, that's uh, definitely not a problem. Okay, a problem would be if we keep adding to shorts while price is going up and we keep adding and we keep adding hoping it will turn back that's just wishful um, uh, trading it's it's not technical it, it it doesn't really have any arguments but we have several arguments in favor of this short which I think should target the area between 63.50 and 63 I'll just label this target area even though in fact this is not the ultimate target it's just the first target area some of you might want to keep this trade especially if it works out well and if you catch a top that might not be hit for a long time you might want to use this as a margin for uh, adding and building up um, bigger lots uh, increasing your exposure as um, the trade progresses your way in any case, for me, shorting is the word of order right now on GU, uh, starting from anywhere above 65.50 up to 66.20, but not above 66.20, and especially not if we have four-hour close somewhere at 60, uh, 6.40, 66.50. That is not a good sign. That's where I would abandon the ship. Just uh, look for a way out, either trying to um, stop and reverse for... Um, this small distance which could be enough to cover for your loss or simply get out and stay out until uh, GU finds some resistance around the previous high. I don't like shorting exactly the resistance. I like shorting if uh, shorts is what I'm looking for. Maybe 30, 40 pips above the resistance. Just about enough for the market to hit stops right above the previous highs and then reverse because I I found those reversals to be uh, more effective, more um, stable, more, more trustworthy. Now, if we go back to this GU trade from last week, okay, and I want to point it out not just to, to show, um, well, we had a good trade, yes, but the point is the trade I was mentioning, which is 61.90, 61.95 long, right above the previous high, can actually reach profits of 6275 and 6515, which is precisely the price that we see right now on the platform. So this is the chart from last week. I haven't changed a thing on this chart. Well, I would like to tell you that I, I went long and, and took all the bits all the way up here, but basically my, um, my trade stopped around 6330 right when I saw this candle here. Okay, that broke the previous high. I didn't like the way, if you look at this candle closely, I didn't like the way it retraced and closed at the previous close, almost trying to close below the resistance at 6330. So I had uh, at the time a very small position left, took some good uh, 150, 200 bits from this trade, and without much of a, say, um, without stops being threatened at any point okay we entered intraday here with a stop that was basically very small 50 pips for uh, aiming for 400 is a very good deal but I did not really catch um, the entire move simply um, uh, took some um, 80 off the table first and then 100 something 150 I think 200 was my uh, best uh, exit right when I saw that uh, it's pulling uh, pulling back here actually I closed at right at the breakout point so had I waited just a few um, just one more four-hour candle I would have probably stayed in for much more for the 165 target 
but um, I was looking actually at euro dollar was trading something else at the time. In any case, guys, this has become from an intraday trade, which is what I was pointing out last week, developed into a nice mid-term trade that reached um, some, um, well, targets of approximately 300 plus bits. Now, this is not necessarily something I, I was insisting on last week, but the GJ, okay, the GJ uh, long um, I was pointing out was right here, if you remember. So this is 31st, right around here, okay? We were looking at a break of the previous high at 13365. And GJ has been going up and down. I still have positions in GJ. As I told you last week, I'm keeping this GJ for a big move that I'm hoping to make about, uh, all in all, about 20% of the account. It's not going to be something happening overnight, obviously. I started shorting quite some time ago. I think the best position right now is approximately 250 pips. But that's not a big position. I, if I take profit right now from that trade, it will be the equivalent of maybe 80, 90 pips of what I usually trade. And I haven't gone through all this trouble to uh, take 80 pips. Okay, the intention is to build up position as we move towards very high levels in GJ according to a longer term analysis. Now, this is the long term perspective. Okay, it's a wave uh, pattern I um, have on my chart and I kept updating this chart for I think six weeks now. Hopefully I will keep updating it up to 150. Okay, it's um, an analysis that does not apply only to the pound yen, but to uh, euro yen and dollar yen as well. It's what I see um, for midterm, long term. This um, drop in the yen against um, the other majors. So GJ will uh, should make no exception. Okay, now what I was pointing out, just quickly mentioning uh, the main element of this um, setup. Okay, we have this as the bottom of a move, the bottom of a, uh, the, the be beginning of a new wave long term. And what makes me confident about that is the fact that we broke the support uh, during that crazy night um, in uh, March. We broke that support only to close above it, and since then we've been moving very strongly. Three very, very strong bullish days that uh, took price away from this 126, okay? Straight up to 140 in basically a very, very quick accelerated move. And we've been retracing in what I think might be the last chance to go in big on GJ for large targets of uh two three thousand pips i'm talking long term maybe uh for another two three months maybe even more than that okay but i think it will pick up speed um as we move uh, through uh 136 and especially after breaking 140 we should see one uh, 150 in uh, a matter of three four weeks okay then we had the retracement perfect abc formation okay retracement formation this definitely breaks the previous high, so you cannot see this wave as retracing anything. Okay? It is actually breaking previous highs, defining a new direction. Okay? Bullish direction here. Retraced exactly at the previous support at 130 and the psychological level. And then consolidated for a long time here. You can see the smaller, let me zoom in here. Look at this very, very, very nice head and shoulders, quite obvious. You can see the head uh, right here at 130 and this shoulder line, okay, at 131.43. I think my first entry is 132.50 or 132.40. I, I don't remember because I don't open that uh, that platform. I do not want to see that sort of profit. I, I will be tempted to uh, reduce the, the position or take it out or something. So I just know that I have it, but I don't uh, open it. It's just there. 
uh, I see that as an investment more like uh, more than a trade. I only like uh, adding to that position when the time uh, is right. Well, now, normally, <laughs> and if this was my intention, I'm sorry that uh, I haven't actually done uh, what I wanted to, was to actually try to add again another small lot around 133.75, 134 maximum at the break of this high. And this is what I'm planning to do all the way up. Okay? 134. This, these 60 pips, you see, would have been much bigger for me and have given me much more if the trade, uh, the, if, if I had added to this trade at the right moment. Now, <coughs> I haven't done that, but let's see, since we are looking at this, at these charts, where this would be interesting to, to do. Where it would be interesting uh, to add to these longs. Let's move on to the four hour chart. So we have breakout as, uh, I expected the breakout of the 133.70 uh, had happened very quickly today. Okay. So we had a move of about 100 pips in no time, but we are pulling back right now. So if, if I'm getting 134.30, 134.30, one thirty four thirty would be the level I would be interested in for a long definitely interested in longs at a possible retest of one thirty three seventy I'll just move these levels slightly higher because i I don't like um entering the trade exactly at the support support is some ten pips lower from these entry points. 133.70, so maybe I would like to enter 133.80. Uh, it doesn't matter 10 bits more or less when you're trading like this, like on the bigger chart. It's just, you're aiming for about 2,000 bits anyway, so what's uh, 5 bits um, higher or lower, okay? In any case, guys, for me, right now, GJ, I'm only thinking longs. It's been like this for some time, but the more we advance, the more we confirm this new direction. I think the more um, we should stick to to this uh, to these longs for as long as we can. Ideally, towards the 150 area, while adding to the trade more and more and more, because this is where um, leverage can help you without the danger of killing you because you're already in profit. So what you risk at, at some point when, when you trade like this, of course, you should keep some measure of balance between what you have in terms of pips and your exposure. But it's not a problem to overexpose and to, to increase leverage more and more if you are actually in profit on, on some of the trades. So like this, all you do is basically moving up your average entry you should just be careful not to move it up too much so you won't get hit by a sneeze in the market of only 50 pips or so. I think the stop should be comfortably about 200 pips when you attempt um, such big moves. Sometimes it's worth uh, trying that and even uh, taking out um, the boost position. You don't have to take out the whole trade. Uh, the one that you took from maybe uh, 132 or 133, okay? When you reach like 137, you just take out the trades that you took that day, which were pr practically risk-free because you are backed up really well by the previous positions. That's why sometimes I like mentioning these trades like uh, last week, okay? And uh, even two weeks back when I was saying that, well, it is finally time to give this GJ some serious attention for midterm long term because these might might be the best levels to uh, to trade it all right let's see um where we have a possible scenario that move in asian session was very nice um i only managed to make profit on the euro dollar i had it from yesterday and um i had to go to sleep and um, leave it on uh, woke up um, very early uh, Asian session and found it already hit 
it had hit uh, big profit. I haven't seen uh, GJ um, until now. Seems like the move was even more impressive. Let's check out the uh, rainbow charts, guys. All right. Now, what do we have on the rainbow? As I was mentioning, guys, the weekly rainbow has not not really changed. We are still in this bearish rainbow, but we will be in a bearish rainbow even at 145. So we cannot be preoccupied with this um, if we are buying. In any case, you can see on this chart quite easily the support settled at 130. So we are buying against that support. And my opinion would be to keep buying this GJ up to at least a level of 145, 150, which, by the way, would be just a very, very small retracement of the losses um, made by this pair since uh, 2007. Okay, we're talking just maybe a, not even a 5% of the overall move down, but we might be um, getting about 2,000 pips in the process, so that's a pretty good deal. Okay, now let's move um, the analysis to something more, um, say, doable for uh, intraday traders. This is your support. This is an attempt to break the bullish rainbow. This is the bullish rainbow right here. An attempt to break it failed. There is no alignment back short. It would have happened if price had dropped to 131 after hitting this top of the rainbow at 13360. But we are now trading 100 pips above that. And this daily candle going away from the um, agglomeration of moving averages is still, I think, for long term, a very good opportunity to buy. I'm talking a comeback inside this bullish rainbow, break of trend line, and price is moving away from the, the agglomeration of moving averages. Right now, as far as this rainbow template is concerned, your stop doesn't have to be further than 130, 150. Even that is sort of generous because the bottom of the rainbow right now is 132.40, so 130.150 just to, uh, to avoid possible spikes at the bottom of the rainbow at the 200 moving average on the daily. So if you are planning or looking into trading GJ long term, again, I'm saying this for I think the fifth consecutive week. This area, anywhere from 131, I think, up to 135, definitely we are inside this area. It's still relevant. You might want to check out your charts and start establishing these positions now that you can still uh, do this at a good price. Okay, of course, uh, if price uh, goes to 142, everyone will be bullish at the time and everyone will say, well, we should have done this, we should have done that. Right now, there's still time. Of course, you have to allow for possible retracements, noise in the market. Okay, so your stop has to be according to the extended target that you're trying to, to catch, the 150, 145, 150. I'm talking 1,000 pips plus. So it shouldn't be a problem to have a stop of 250 pips. Now, this is all talk of midterm, long term. Okay, if you guys are also trading... Uh, intraday strategies or shorter term strategies, you might want to look at the 4-hour chart, maybe uh, adapt your stop to this chart or maybe take um, trades uh, at different levels. I always like that approach because like this, at least you're not wrong. For instance, you want to buy GJ, okay? You want to buy five lots here. Why don't you buy one lot to start with? At least you, you are sure that you get something out of it in case right now it's going to the moon. Okay, you buy right now 135. The risk is not big because you're going in 20% of your normal position. Okay, you can back it up with a big stop and just simply wait. If it goes 134, you can go in again. For as long as the setup is still valid, which in my opinion is all the way down to 133.50. Even there, price, I don't think it has chances of going down, but... At 133, I would stop and see if it's trying to breach through uh, this 132, because that would not look good. 
but even down here, even here, I think we have uh, good chances of seeing more upside. In terms of rainbow, now purely on the rainbow, this is a bullish signal. Um, it's too bad it happened very uh, quickly and that we're looking at the chart now. But this candle right here, closing at 13364, is your realignment. This is the alignment. When the red and the yellow come out of the rainbow, coming to the upside, price tends to keep consolidating until you have a second alignment and price breaks the previous high. This is the alignment that usually lasts. Okay? Let me give you another example just to illustrate this. This, you see? Price goes down, makes a first rainbow, but it tends to consolidate still. When it makes the second one, the second alignment and price breaks the previous low, the drop is quite strong, quite abrupt. That's why I think um, now we, we might be on a good uh, run to the upside. By the way, it, I think it just bounced off the 135 level. I would not trust this 135 to short against it. So definitely, I would not trust 135 for shorts right now. I know it looks extremely uh, round and logical to, to see bounces at this point. That's, in my opinion, exactly the reason why you shouldn't trust it. There um, are dealers out there looking for your money. And, uh, well, make no mistake, they are interested in your money, even if it's a few bucks. And these stops around 135 can be easily hit, and I think 135.70, 136 is for today quite an easy target. I'll just put 135.90 as a possible daily target. Let me just um, mark this on the chart for next week. So, intraday target price now at 13470 all right so next week when we look at these charts we can see uh, what happens this is still valid of course if price retraces more that's because probably i'm so uh, disinterested in shorting gj but i don't really care uh, whether profits could be made shorting it of course, uh, you might be able to catch a few pips here and there, but I'm much more interested in uh, these moves, okay? This is basically what I'm interested in, 136 and beyond that, okay? Let's see if the one-hour chart is giving us any interesting setup. Not really. The one-hour is just telling me that maybe we top temporarily here, so... Um, yeah, if I go in long here, if I add to my longs, I don't think I will do that until 134.50. Okay, 134.50, uh, I might open that platform and add one uh, small position. Not before that. Uh, it looks like uh, the wave is a little bit exhausted. You can see the alignment of the rainbow happened here very early Asian session. See, we, we are in a bullish rainbow for some time. It's not even the second alignment. This is the first alignment. This will be the second. We're talking just uh, or the strike. It looks like the one hour is telling me to wait some more. I might get better prices for these short. There might be some support here, though. A minute is uh, right. Guys, I'll tell you what, I'm opening the platform right now and taking another one-tenth position. Remember, I'm trying to to um, get into a monster position here, so uh, I keep adding too long, not taking anything out. 134.75 is my entry, just went in, went long, 134.75. The stop loss right now is just default uh, 131.75. Remember, I have already positioned, so I'm just repositioning inside this big longer term trade on GJ. 
if I hit 135.10 immediately, if just right now in a few minutes, this goes up and touches 135.20, let's say. So I had, if I get about 50 pips, but very, very quickly, right now in the next uh, maybe 15 minutes, uh, less than an hour, I'm going to take profits for that trade and wait for price to pull back again. I will just simply assume that this is a, well, a uh, small gift from the market. I'm going to take it. But in fact, to be honest with you guys, I would prefer to see price lower. Uh, even 134.20, that would be nice because I can add some more here. Okay. Looking to add to add to longs here at this level, 134.20. And it will be a bigger position than the one I just took. This is a 10% position. It will be a, a most likely a 20% position. I'm already in with about 50%. So not really having a full lot uh, yet. But it's a profitable trade. I think it, it started to be profitable from that first, um, that first trade I took. All right. Let me just check if um, there is anything else on the 4-hour chart. I want to check this 4-hour chart. Look at the indicators. Yeah, I like the way um, the tricks and the um, rate of change are looking uh, nicely bullish up. Um, the angle is good. Oh, I just wanted to point out the um, first target. This would be the target. Oh, I already have it. All right, so the target is here, 134.70. Um, uh, sorry, 135.90, 135.90. Right here, this um, yellow line. So that would be about 110 pips from my entry point here at 75. Any questions, guys, related to GU and GJ? So to conclude on these two pairs, I'm looking to buy GJ again and again and again for as long as this 4-hour chart remains supported above 132.50. Let me mark this level here. In my opinion, only below this level, the mid-term position longs are threatened. That's why I wouldn't buy anywhere below 132, because that's just not going to um, to um, give me a better position. I will be, at the time, I think uh, slightly at the loss at 132 uh, if price goes all the way there now. Because remember, I have bigger positions long, which are now nicely in profit, above 100 pips. Okay, so I'm just looking to add and keep adding and keep adding. And hopefully sometime, uh, maybe uh, in a few months, somewhere around 145, 150, maybe we can uh, do this together in the room. We take profits for everything, for all these uh, positions that we've been working so hard on. Um, it's been now, I think, about six weeks or maybe more than um, when I'm talking about um, shorting the yen against the other uh, majors. So trying to to capitalize on this idea and on this uh, trading plan, keep you guys updated. I think there are uh, one or two of you who follow this um, attempt. All right. So I think the chart is um, self-explanatory uh, at this point. Quickly going over the GU doesn't really make much sense to see GU lower than 162 if GJ is going up to that point unless, of course, unless um, dollar yen is going up uh, very, very strongly. That would potentially lower GU and we could see something that, well, have, we, we don't see too often, the GU and GJ moving in different directions or even if they don't have to move exactly in the opposite direction, but uh, if they break this um, 
this connection that they have that would be um, because of a very very strong uh, or a very very weak of course uh, dollar yen uh, I don't have just a second uh, Mano a moment because I closed the platform something uh, they're not even all on the same platform that's a little bit com complicated for me but I can give you an idea at least at least what I have on this platform well right now with the last position my average is 13298 13298 pretty good actually it's right at the beginning of the move but I I was actually hoping to be uh, in bigger because my position is not that big uh, I am 80% uh, of my usual lot so not even a full normal lot um, I'm only making about uh, 100 pips which is good but when you're targeting uh, about 1000 I'm hoping to reach the top with something like five times my usual lot so trying to, to add to that and take good advantage of the leverage because at some point you know when you have a big position and uh, the market moves uh, in your favor and your stop is somewhere lower you you actually have the uh, the calm to to allow the position to give you something and you know money is pouring in uh, in in your account very quickly and that's the time to to make uh, maybe you know 5 or 10% can be made in just the last few days of that move uh, of course i hope to to keep a good uh, contact with this trend and just uh, not add um, at random levels just add only when the market is telling me to do so all right I think my session is coming to an end uh, now guys thanks for joining we'll uh, look forward to um, to updating these um, setups next week we'll see um, where this GJ is I'm not uh, really uh, putting too much effort into this I can't say I'm trading this GJ I'm, I'm simply uh, investing in it uh, longer term so uh, it doesn't really bother me. I haven't even seen uh, it uh, popping up um, lately because I'm busy trading uh, euro dollar shorter term. This, on the other hand, has been doing really well. So maybe it's a sign that um, I should focus more on such midterm, long-term positions. It just doesn't fit with my profile. I'm, I'm not a very patient person in general, so it's a lot of. Um, it requires a lot of. Uh, um, strong nerves on, on my side to keep this trade rolling as I promised myself I would because if I take the trade out right now uh, I would uh, throw down the trade the work I've put into analyzing this GJ for the last two months I think I've been looking for levels to, to go in and talking about it and well I think it, it's time to to um, you know put the money where the mouth is all right thank you guys again for attending today I hope you guys enjoyed the session I'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great week. And um, hopefully um, I'll see you above 136 on GJ uh, next Tuesday. Have a, have a great um, week, guys.